So, when you're learning redstone, the first thing you're probably going to want to do is learn in creative mode. So, I'm going to create a new creative uh, world. And I'm going to go into the uh, world options, and I'm going to go to world type super flat. Uh, now this is a good idea, because otherwise you're going to have to keep flattening land, and you don't want to have to do that. Now so, this is a reasonably new addition. Underneath the uh, super flat option, there's a customise button. And this is what a normal super flat world is. It's very low down, slimes spawn everywhere, so we don't want that. We're going to go to presets. You've got all these different ones, and on the bottom, you have redstone ready. We're going to use that one. And I'll show you in a second what that is. So, create new world. So, when you open your inventory, by pressing E of course, there's a redstone tab in your creative inventory. Now this is most of what you're going to need when you're making redstone, but you'll find when you're making redstone creations that the transportation tab with all the minecarts and detector rails and activator rails and things like that is also very useful. Uh, we'll use those later, those are useful for all sorts from timers to anything really. Now the main component of redstone is redstone dust. So there we go. It's dust, you can connect it together, go all over the place, and you can make wires out of it. So there we go, fairly simple. So now, we've got some redstone here, and if we want to power it, there are many ways we can do this. For example, redstone torch is the simplest way. Place a redstone torch, it lights up, take it away, it goes away. Simple. Uh, there's also redstone blocks, which are made by putting, filling a crafting square, a 3x3 three three craft, crafting square with redstone dust. And they also power things. And those are, you may think, okay, they're both the same. But the difference is, a block of redstone can be pushed by a piston. And we'll show uses for that later on. You can also power this redstone by placing a pressure plate. And you can stand on it, like that. So there's a wooden one. And there's a stone one. Now, again, they look as if they both do the same thing. But the difference is, if I throw a block onto if I can get it right, if I throw a block onto a stone one it won't it won't light up if I put it on a wooden one it will but be aware that mobs can activate both of those so if you're opening a door using pressure plates chances are you probably want to use stone uh, so that items won't keep it open but ideally use something like a lever which I'll show you now so we've got our our wire there. Let me bring it round the front oh, so I can show you. And obviously redstone can go up and down blocks. So if I put a lever on a block, that block will activate. So all redstone coming off of that block and even on top of that block will be activated. When I turn it off, it goes off again. You can also use buttons buttons would do the same thing but they will turn off automatically you can make stone buttons and wooden buttons the difference is wooden buttons can be activated by things such as arrows you can shoot an arrow onto that button and it will stay down until the arrow despawns which can be quite useful now there are actually two other kinds of pressure plate those are weighted pressure plate pressure plates so I've got a light weighted pressure plate and a heavy weighted pressure plate and they are of course made of iron and gold. Now if you stand on them, they don't work. But the difference is, you can throw items on them. And the more items you throw, the further along the signal will go. I don't know if you can see that. But um, the stronger the redstone... Oh, the more you put on it, the stronger the redstone current, and the further it travels. And this was recently added when they, they changed the way redstone worked. So now it's no longer on or off, it's actually, it can get stronger and weaker. So if I take it off, they will go away. And that's a lightweight one, that's a light pressure plate. A heavy one, judging by the name, it takes more blocks to get the same effect. There we go, now it's gone two. And if I keep going, it'll go three. Another way to power something is using trip wires. So for example, if you want to make a, a better hidden way to power stuff, you can use these trip wires. They connect between these, when you walk through them it makes a tick as it powers and from either end of this you can power and they will power both ends. 
And this has actually been used to trans transport redstone signals a very, very long way. Because if you if you stand in it, you can have this tripwire ridiculously long, right off into the distance, and it will power the block that's in the distance. Uh, if you throw stuff into it, it does also work. So, yeah, it's a, it's a very good way of transferring redstone current, uh, particularly if you can just drop an item out of a dispenser, and it will transfer a long, long way. Now, the final source of redstone power is the daylight sensor. And so basically, during the day, it will output a redstone signal and the way redstone works is it's not digital it isn't either on or off it's analog which means it gets stronger and weaker uh, so as you can see so the sun's coming up and that's how strong it is now the way you can tell how strong it is by, is by how far it travels you see it's bright up here but it gets quite dull over here and each block it travels the signal gets slightly weaker so for example if I travel it over here that is the same strength as that because they're the same distance away from the, the point at which they diverge um, so this is the point I'll mark it with the redstone there that's the point at which it is now and we'll, we'll check in a minute as it becomes closer to midday what it does but here I've got an example of a a clock and this is I'll show you now some some footage of how this clock works um, but it works in the same same principle as what I'm doing here and it is basically the same thing uh, only difference is as it goes along it lights up these glowstone lamps lamps um, and those those demonstrate how you know what time of day it is um, so as it gets closer and closer to midday you'll notice it gets uh, the trail gets longer or rather how far it powers gets longer that's because the signal is stronger uh, after it gets to midday it will start to go back down again as you can see in the the footage of the, the clock time lapse uh, and you see it's now two blocks further than it was before when I marked it with that redstone so that's kind of uh, one of those things that you'll find a few uses for it, you won't find lots and lots of uses for it, but it's very useful for, say, you know, because it, 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 it turns off at night, so if you invert the signal, you can make it so it powers um, things, you know, lights during the night, so that your base is lit up during the night, or, or just a clock, as I've shown over here. <laughs> 